2017 rule book, um, uh, 2017 rule changes are coming more and more to light, and it seems like the majority of the rules kings so far are quite vague, but the one thing that's standing out more than anything else right now is the closed cockpit discussion. And, you know, a, an emphasis on having a closed cockpit design fully functional and operational by 2017. Yeah, I, it seems like they're heading towards having a closed cockpit. That seems to be the most extreme side where, the, you know, you see in the prototype Halo design that, you know, Mercedes came up with. And uh, it seems like that seems to be more extreme. And on the more conservative side, uh, there seems to be just pushes for just more cockpit protection. Mm. So what, what exactly would that cockpit protection involve? I'm not 100% sure on this one myself. Uh, I'm not sure about that either. It's it's very vague. <laughs> it's very, I'm like, I'm being honest, it's very vague because they couldn't, like last week they couldn't come to you know a conclusive yeah this is what we're gonna do for 2017 so it's gonna be pushed back to next month in February that's when mm -hmm. the last chance meeting will be held. You know what the running last the recurring theme is of F1 that no one can agree on anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah, well, whatever. They give me that idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty much long and the short of it, really. I mean, sure, we've seen the head of design, and I know Anthony Davidson. I um, had a conversation with Will Buxton about this on his website, talking about the design, and he said how it wasn't ideal, but it is effective. And, you know, it, this this whole thing was laughed off about around this time last year because, and I quote from Christian Horner, the cars looked ugly. Uh, like, like that's the priority around here all of a sudden. Um, so, you know, it, we've, we've already come a long way from, from public perception of that, and, and obviously um, Justin Wilson, I'm sure, has got a lot to do with that, unfortunately. But it's it's interesting. And we, again, King, we've talked about this on previous episodes of the show before. And we've talked about how the logistical problems of a closed cockpit in Formula 1 and open wheel single seaters in general. I mean, the FIA are going to do this right, obviously. They're going to test and test and test and, you know, go around the clock on this. But do you conceivably see a design potentially working by this time next year? Next year? No, no. I'm I can't see it. No, I'm not even going to hesitate. Like, IndyCar was very pragmatic with their solution. They knew what open cockpit design would be able to, you know, be able to roll out for this season or next season. So they decided to go the next best route. And they knew that one of the big problems with an op open cockpit is debris entering the cockpit. So they decided, okay, we can't protect the cockpit. So let's try to prevent debris. So they decided to just, you know, all the aero parts to the car. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. I get that. So yeah, I mean, it's ambitious. I mean, and it again, the FIA is not half assed They've been testing designs for this kind of thing for I thinking for over five years now. Um, so this is not a new thing by any stretch of the imagination. This is this is not a spur of the moment call off to see what happened to Justin. It's not like that. They've been doing this for a long time, looking for viable ways to make this happen and. The problem is they're running out of time to make that happen for 2017, and apparently all the drivers now want this. But logistically, how are they going to find a way to make it work is a totally different ball game entirely, Adam. And again, I just I can't see it happening anytime soon because again, I think there's so many different angles, and I think I said it before how problem A can often create problem B, mm. and he might need a totally different solution C to make it happen, and. Yeah, I'm not confident about this at all. No, I mean, the, the big issue with closed cockpits in F1 is then trapping the driver in the car if they're, if they're in an accident. That's the big issue. And mm. from what I've read, it's, it's all about the GPDA are apparently unified on this, which has kind of come out of nowhere. We haven't heard much of this over the winter, and then suddenly yeah. there's a huge push, and everyone's united about it. But Alex Wurtz, who is the head of the, uh, the GPDA, has you know made some very good points about it. But what I've also seen is that They've admitted that the ideal solution is jet fighter canopies, but they admit that's a long way away. So this already feels to me like a stopgap solution. And to be honest with you, if we know what mm. the end game should be, shouldn't we be working on that? Because, I mean, this halo design does look quite effective, but it also has visual problems. It, it reduces visibility Massively. quite drastically. Um, will it be strong enough to resist the impact on something like a flying tire? Or, and you know... You look at um, yeah, I mean, Felipe Massa it, being hit with the suspension ring. 
that could probably still fit through the Halo system. So again, it's not perfect. And I just get this horrible feeling that people are trying to rush a system in that's not going to work when we know what the ideal solution would be. Let's work on that. Come on. Let's do it properly. And even Don't with yes, even with a jet canopy, you do have problems like with the driver getting out. We just exactly. saw this this past weekend in the Rolex 24 where Max Angelelli couldn't physically get out of the car himself. Yeah, you Whoa. have to be hauled out of the car. That's a very good point. And that's a car with a door. You have to be hauled out of the car. And I know King mentioned as well on, on I think it was episode 23, we talked about this. We talked about how temperature is important because, I mean, yes. these cars already get hot enough and these guys are already physically drained after an hour and a half race. Imagine then telling them to race in a greenhouse. That's Especially at Singapore, what you're like making that. them do. If you, if you, yeah, yeah. Like for example, like they could easily be. I mean, the canopy sounds great, but the problem is, is that you'd have to completely redesign the cars to mm. have a cooling system in inside them, so that drivers don't overheat and pass out and whatnot. And that obviously is a totally different ball game entirely. So again, the ideal solution probably would be a jet canopy of some kind. But again, and it comes with its own set of problems, which again we'd have to find a way to navigate around that. But I completely agree with Adam in this case. If if you if you know what the end game is, work on the end game. Don't work on a stopgap for what was a couple of freak accidents. I mean, let's let's take them for what they were. But that that, that was freak accidents, and this is not a regular occurrence, particularly the in Bianchi single one. seat racing, especially the Bianchi one, which unfortunately, as people don't want to admit, was kind of self inflicted. Um, so. You know, of course, there's an exposed head when you when in single seat. That's, that's that's not a new thing. It's been around for decades. So, you know, let's take our time and make sure we get it right, as opposed to trying to grandfather in this stopgap to try and please the drivers. Which, again, when when it comes to the long and the short of it, might not actually be the problem in the end anyway. Mm. Moving on to more F1 related stuff, Pirelli, the as I'd call it, F1's finest scapegoat. <laughs> 